Hello, this is Vasily Spill, and I'm back with another study, and this one should be a brief one. And this one's titled, The Biblical Law of First Mention, Wine, Alcoholic Wine. Now, I'm going to read a few scriptures from Genesis, and I also want to read something from Exodus. But before I go there, I just want to go to a PDF and read something quickly in regards to the Biblical Law of First Mention. And I have it saved here. And there we go. Okay, so the biblical law of first mention. And this is a PDF that I uh, grabbed off uh, the internet. And this is what it says in regards to the biblical law of first mention. One of the most remarkable evidences of biblical unity is the internal consistency. And nowhere is this internal evidence more strikingly evident than in the phenomenon which students of the Bible re refer to as the law of first mention which simply means that the very first time any important word is mentioned in the Bible, usually, of course, is in Genesis, the first book of the Bible, Scripture gives that word its most complete and accurate meaning to not only serve as a key in understanding the word's biblical concept, but also to provide a foundation for its fuller development in later parts of the Bible. And now it lists a whole bunch of different words and examples of this phenomenon. And... The one I want to cover is going to be the word wine. And the word wine is first mentioned in Genesis chapter 9, verse 21. Okay, so now let's go to Genesis uh, chapter 9 and look at verses 20 down to 24. And we're going to find the first mention of the word wine. And let's see what the Holy Ghost intended for what the word wine is to mean. Is it grape juice or is it alcoholic? Because that has a profound meaning as we look at the word wine throughout the whole Bible. And so let me begin reading. And I hope that you have your King James Bible handy. Or if you don't, that you would go back. And check what I say, compare what I say against the Word of God. And the Word of God reads in Genesis 9.20, which, which happens right after the flood. And Noah began to be an husbandman, and he planted a vineyard. And he drank of the wine. So we have the word wine mentioned here the first time in, in Genesis 9 verse 21. Now, what happened when Noah drank of this wine? And so he drank of the wine and was drunken. Now, what do you think that means? Is this grape juice? No. Anyone who's honest here realizes that one does not get drunk off drinking grape juice. But he was drunken off alcoholic wine. I'm going to read further. And he was uncovered within his tent. So he was like naked within his tent. And Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father. So uncovered, nakedness. We see that the Bible defines the word uncovered as being nakedness within the next verse. And told his two brethren without. And Shem and Japheth took a garment and laid it upon both their shoulders and went backward. And covered the nakedness of their father. And their faces were backward. And they saw not their father's nakedness. And Noah awoke from his wine. And knew not what his younger son had done unto him. So to me this is a clear cut example in the Bible. Where we find out that wine is indeed alcoholic. And we know that uh, Noah became drunk off this wine that he planted. Well, the wine they drank after he planted the vineyard and he made wine. And that he became so drunk that when he awoke from his wine, so I guess he kind of, he passed out from his wine. And when he finally awoke from his wine, uh, he didn't even know what his younger son had done unto him. Now, I'm not going to go into, you know, what the son had done unto him and stuff like that. That's not the focus of this. But 
I believe it's crystal clear that the Bible teaches that the wine, as it's first mentioned in the Bible, is in fact alcoholic wine. Now, I think I've heard, uh, uh, as Kent Hovind believes, that uh, Noah probably didn't realize what would happen to him when he drank of the wine. Uh, I guess the, the, the thinking or the reasoning may be that after the flood, certain principles or certain laws of nature had changed and that he didn't realize that when he was going to drink this wine that he would get drunk. And that's a very possible uh, possible uh, uh, scenario in this case. But again, that is even really the primary focus because the primary focus is the fact that wine, as it's mentioned first in the Bible, is alcoholic. And what I wrote down here is that when we hearken to the biblical law of first mention, we learned that the word wine is alcoholic wine. So the word wine has a primary meaning of being alcoholic in nature and in the vast majority of times in the Bible, it is certainly not grape juice. So whenever the word wine appears, we need to bear in mind that it is alcoholic and that it is the case and that this is the case with very few exceptions. And with the rare exceptions, the immediate context of scriptures will help us to determine so. Now, I want to read from Genesis chapter 14, which is the second mention of the word wine. And again, bearing in mind that the word wine, as we found so far in the Bible, is alcoholic. So, what do you think the wine in Genesis 14 is? And that has, that has also repercussions for something else, a very important doctrine. And so it reads here, Genesis 14, verse 18, And Melchizedek, Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine, and he was the priest of the Most High God. And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abram of the Most High God, possessor of heaven and earth, and blessed be the Most High God, which hath delivered thine enemies into thine into thy hand, and he gave him tithes of all. See, to me, there's nothing within the context of the scriptures that I just read to indicate that this wine is grape juice. This wine is also alcoholic. And think about the Lord's Supper. What Melchizedek gave to Abram or Abraham, this bread and wine, is a picture of the Lord's Supper. The Lord's Supper is also going to be containing alcoholic wine. But that's a study for itself. But think about it. The, this picture here of, of Melchizedek, what he gave to, to Abram or Abraham, is a picture also of the Lord's Supper, so the, it ha the type has to fit also the, the actual truth of the matter, which, it, which this is also, this is a type of the Lord's Supper. So, you know, you can't have grape juice in the Lord's Supper, and you can't have, you know, the wine here Melchizedek gave to uh, Abram. It's not grape juice. This is alcoholic wine. Again, nothing in the context suggests that it's something different. So again, wine here, the wine here, in Genesis 14 is alcoholic wine, just as the wine in Genesis chapter 9 was alcoholic wine. And I want to move forward to a incestuous, incestuous story that we find with Lot and his two uh, daughters. And it reads here in Genesis 19.30. And Lot went up out of Zor and dwelt in the mountain and his two daughters with him, for he feared to dwell in and Zor. And he dwelt in a cave, he and his two daughters, and the firstborn said unto the younger, Our father is old, and there is not a man in the earth to come in unto us after the manner of all the earth. Come, let us make our father drink wine, and we will lie with him, that we may pres uh, preserve seed of our father. And they made their father drink wine that night, and the firstborn went in and lay with, lay with her father, and he perceived not when she lay down, nor when she arose. So here we have in Genesis 19, 
that one of the daughters of Lot gave gave uh, gave Lot their dad their father to drink wine, and this wine was definitely alcoholic, as we realize that because the fact that this wine uh, resulted in in Lot not even realizing or perceiving when uh, his daughter lay down, nor when she arose, and again. There's nothing within the context that suggests that this is grape juice. So, just want to bring this up before I forget. Genesis 9, it's alcoholic. People don't argue that. Genesis 19, the word wine is alcoholic. So, Genesis 9, the word wine is alcoholic. Genesis 19, the word wine is alcoholic. But people want you to, make, uh, people want you to think that in Genesis 14, when Melchizedek gave wine unto Abraham, that that was not an alcoholic wine. That just doesn't fit. The pattern so far is consistent. The context shows us as well that the wine in all three instances is definitely alcoholic and not grape juice. So going further, and it came to pass on the morrow or the next day that the firstborn said unto the younger, Behold, I lay yesterday night with my father. Let us make him drink wine this night also and go thou in and lie with him that we may preserve seed of our father. And they made their father drink wine that night also. And the younger arose and lay with him. And he perceived not when she lay down, nor when she arose. So history repeated itself. Thus were both of the daughters of Lot with child by their father. So clearly here, the word wine is alcoholic. And we know that when someone drinks too much wine, it can get to the point where they don't even know what's going, in, going around. They don't know that uh, certain things are even happening to them. So that's a warning for, for anyone not to drink too much wine because that's a consequence that you're not even aware of, uh, of reality. Now, so far, I believe Genesis 9 is alcoholic. Genesis 14 is alcoholic. What we read from Genesis 19 is alcoholic. So there's no reason to suggest that Genesis 27, 27 is any different. And you'll see again, there's nothing in the context that will make you think, or shouldn't make you think, that it's grape juice. And this is a story, a famous story in the Bible, of Jacob, or Israel, and his dad, uh, Isaac. And it reads here, this part of it, And Jacob went near unto Isaac his father, and he felt him, and said, The, the voice is Jacob's voice, but the hands are the hands of Esau. And he discerned him not, because his hands were hairy as his brother Esau's hands, so he blessed him. And he said, Bring it near to me, and I will eat on my son's venison, that my soul may bless thee. And he brought it near to him, and he did eat. And he brought him wine, and he drank. So we see a pattern here. We're well, not a pattern here, but we see that first uh, Isaac ate the food, or the venison, and then he drank. Uh, the wine so it's a good idea if anyone wants to be drinking any wine any alcoholic wine that they should they should be having it with a meal and again is grape juice anywhere found here within the context can you in any way from the context come up with the conclusion and it'll be a sound conclusion that the wine here is grape juice i don't think so the context, it's it's simple. It's got to be alcoholic. There's nothing here that suggests that that J that uh, Jacob uh, had grabbed, let's say, grapes, and that he had pressed them, and he and by pressing them, he pressed it into a cup, and that, that this was grape juice. Nothing here. This is the kind of language you would have to have to have wine here being grape juice, but it's not. It's alcoholic. So this is the fourth uh, significant mention, or this is the fourth set of examples, more like it, where we see that wine is alcoholic. I'm going to read further. And his father Isaac said unto him, Come near now and kiss me, my son. And he came near and kissed him. And he smelled the smell of his raiment and blessed him and said, See, the smell of my son is as the smell of a field, which the Lord hath blessed. Therefore God give thee of the dew of heaven, and the fatness of the earth. Now this is blessings that 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 uh, Isaac is giving to Jacob. And what is one of the blessings? I, and I read a bit. And the fatness of the earth, and plenty of corn and wine. So again, do you see grape juice being here? 
No, there's nothing in the context. It's just this is grape juice. We know, again, Genesis 9, 14, Genesis 19, and now in this, and this Genesis 27, this wine is going to be alcoholic as well. So it's a blessing to have wine. Let people serve thee, and nations bow down to thee. Be Lord over thy brethren, and let thy mother's sons bow down to thee. Cursed be every one that curseth thee, and blessed be he that blesseth thee. So, I believe that this wine that, was, that is a blessing to receive is actually alcoholic wine. Now, last verse I want to look in this short study is in regards to drink offerings that are wine. Exodus 29, 40. And with the one lamb, a tenth deal of flour mingled with the fourth part of an hin of beaten oil and the fourth part of an hin of wine for a drink offering. Now, do you believe that this wine is grape juice? If so, where in the context does it say that it's grape juice? Because so far in the Bible we've seen or we should see that all the instances where wine is used, it's alcoholic. Remember the, the biblical mention of, of um, the biblical law of first mention. And that in the beginning, God defined the word wine for us as being alcoholic. And that definition is carried throughout the scriptures. And it's no difference here. There's nothing in the context that suggests that this wine is grape juice. I don't see it. I don't know how I used to see it. But uh, I deceived myself. I read into the scripture something that I want to read. See, we gotta allow, we got to go into the scriptures and search the scriptures. And um, we got to do our Bible studies. And we, we can't enter, enter a Bible study or the reading of the Word of God with like a preconceived notion. We, gotta allow, we, got, we need to allow God to teach us through His Spirit what His Word means. And to me... I believe that the Spirit of God has taught me and is teaching others uh, throughout the world that wine, for the vast majority of times in the Bible, is indeed alcoholic. And with very few exceptions, it's not. And when it's not alcoholic wine, when it's, when it's like a grape juice, the Bible's context within those scriptures, within, that ver within those verses, is going to make it very clear that it's not alcoholic wine. So... What, what were the wine offerings that God had commanded the Israelites to give unto him, the Levites? Alcoholic wine offerings. And that's where we're going to leave it off pretty much. Because in the next study, I want to look a little bit more into the wine, the drink offerings that were wine. And I believe I'm going to provide even more proof, though it's not really needed. If, you, if you've listened to the two studies up to this point in time. But, you know, it's always good to build up and see, and, and see more and more proof that indeed wine in the Bible, and indeed the drink offerings in the Bible, that all the drink offerings in the Bible that were wine were definitely strong wine or alcoholic wine. So this is what I got for you. This is Vasily Spill uh, signing off. God bless you. Bye.